In this episode, amazing fruit hacks. Now I'm going to teach you a way to peel your mango without using a knife or a cup or whatever other utensils that most people would use. Anyway, so all you need is a coin and a toothpick. So you want to run your coin along the skin of the mango. You've got to do it all the way around. What it does is it kind of separates the skin from the flesh. You'll be able to feel the difference. It kind of feels like it's, like as if it's bruised, but it's not. Next thing you want to do is grab your toothpick, pierce the toothpick into the skin of the mango like that. You want to run your toothpick around your mango, just like this. How that's so easy. <laughs> It's like, it's like cutting through what are you, something really soft. <laughs> butter. It's like cutting through butter. Yes. <laughs> All right, so once you've made your slit, grab your toothpick and you just want to further separate the skin from the flesh, just like that. You can see it's really, really easy. See, it's already coming off, just like that. Oh, yum. Yum. Same thing again, separate the skin from the flesh. And just like that, there's not much flesh on the skin, so you're not wasting so much of the mango. So that's fantastic. Oh my God. Mm. <laughs> I love mango, it's so good. <laughs> So here's another great way to cut an avocado. So grab your knife, cut till you hit the seed, all right? And then you want to cut around just like this. Make sure the two ends meet. And then you want to do the same thing, the opposite direction. So you want to do a cross. All right. And just like this, you've cut open your avocado. Next thing you want to do, grab the skin, peel it off, and you've got yourself a nice, Fleshy avocado. Mmm. I super love avocado. It's a healthy fat. <laughs> Is that correct, Tien? Are you watching? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here's a really cool way to open your long ungs, okay? So very easy, you just need a toothpick. Pierce your toothpick all the way through to the other side, and then you just wanna twist your toothpick around the long ung. So that just cuts it open. And then all you gotta do is you just squeeze the bottom like, oh! like that. <laughs> Oops, sorry, that wasn't meant to happen. It just kind of flew out in the wrong direction. <laughs> But anyway, let me try that again. Squeeze the long ung out of the skin, just like that. Very easy. I want to do more, it's quite satisfying to do. <laughs> ah, how cool is this? Now, if you need to peel your tomato, here's a really simple way you can do it. You just want to make a little slit, okay? You don't want to go too deep because you just want to pierce the skin kind of deal. And you just want to do it cross. So now I'm going to go ahead and put it in the microwave for one minute. All right, so now my tomato is ready. You can see the split clearer now. All right, so what you want to do is you just want to peel the skin off just like that. It's a bit slippery and it's a bit hot for me to hold, so bear with me, guys. And there you have it, skinning a tomato. It's hot. It's really hot. Okay, so I've waited for that to cool down and I went ahead and I peeled my tomato. As you can see, all the skin has been taken off very easily. So you're probably wondering, what are you gonna use that for? Many things. You can make bolognese, soup, anything tomato-based, obviously. <laughs> oh yeah, you can do a lot of things, though, but that's how you peel a tomato. <laughs> So some of you may not know what this is. It kind of looks like an orangutan's ball. It is not, it is actually rambutan. So you'll find these quite widely available in Southeast Asia. They are very sweet. The texture of it is kind of like a firm, fleshy grape, if that makes sense. I, I, I don't know, you just have to try it. They are delicious. Anyway, it looks scary, I know, 
but there is a way to open these easily. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab my knife, put a little slit into the skin, and then you just wanna pull apart the skin and then your rambutan will be sitting nicely inside. Inside this fruit, there is a seed. For the people out there that eat rambutans, you most likely would put this whole fruit inside your mouth and just kinda of eat the flesh off the seed. And usually when that happens, you end up eating, getting bits of the husk, which is really gross. So I just I discovered a way to um, get the flesh off the seed without having the husk bits on the flesh, okay? And I learned this from Wendy, so thank you, Wendy. <laughs> so all you need to do is you get a small knife and then you just want to cut around the seed like that. Okay, I purposely cut into the seed there. So you can see this is the bit that I'm talking about that you end up chewing, which is not nice that. And this is one without it. And then that way you don't have to eat those bits and it's really gross. Just like that. It kind of tastes like lychees. There you go. You guys know what lychees is. That's what it kind of tastes like. And the texture as well. And there you have it. Now you can have a nice bowl of rambutans with no seeds and no husk. So with this next one, I'm gonna teach you how to cut a pomelo. First thing you wanna do, cut the ends of the pomelo. You need to cut it so that you can see the flesh. So once you've cut the ends off, you wanna go ahead and cut it in half. Then you wanna cut the rind off the edges. Okay, so it's gonna look something like this. Next thing you wanna do is make a slit from the middle to the edge. And then all you have to do is you just pull this apart like this. And then you get nice chunks of your pomelo. Very easy. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> so next up is how to de-seed a pomegranate. So I'm gonna cut my pomegranate into half like that. So next, you wanna put pressure on the center bit here and push that down just to loosen up all the pomegranate seeds. Once it's all loosened up, grab a spoon or something to whack it with, and then you just whack your pomegranate like this, and all the seeds will come out. And there you have it. That is how you de-seed your pomegranate. Very, very easy. Great for when you're angry and you wanna get some frustrations out, then you can just whack a fruit. Now, if you have a bunch of cherries and you don't have a cherry pitter, you can just simply use a paper clip. This one's really, really easy. You just have to pull your paper clip apart like that. Dig the paper clip into your cherry, put it in fairly deep, and you wanna move the paper clip around the pit. You just kinda of wanna dig the pit out, just like this. It looks a little bit messy, but if you wanna make a cherry pie and you need to get rid of the pits and you don't have a pitter, you can just use a paper clip. So now I'm gonna teach you how to cut a peach. I mean, there's many ways you can cut it, but this one is a really cool way to do it. First thing you wanna do is cut around the peach in a circle like so. And you wanna pivot the peach around the pip inside. Just like this, okay? And then another one like this, okay? Then you wanna go to the side of the peach and do it this way, okay? I don't even need to twist it or anything, okay? <laughs> It's just falling apart. I can't grab it. I wanted to show you this really cool thing, but it's all falling apart already. I'm gonna try another one. Hopefully this one won't fall apart as easily. Just be careful you don't cut your hands. Very excited, this peach. It just wants to fall apart on me. I'm just gonna show you what I meant. So when it's all whole like that, you just twist it like this and it will all fall apart. A very easy way to eat your peaches and they're all nice and bite-sized. Boom! <laughs> now I'm gonna teach you how to choose a pineapple. So let's talk about color first. When a pineapple is green, it means it is not ripe. But when it is a nice golden yellow, it means that it is perfectly ripe. So when you buy a pineapple, you want to make sure that it is a good mixture in between. You wanna see a little bit of green and a little bit of yellow. Yesterday when I got the pineapple, it actually had more green throughout the whole pineapple. But today, it is all yellow. Another thing to look out for is the eye of the pineapple. Now, the bigger the eye, the sweeter it will be. You can also smell the pineapple. So pineapples ripen from the bottom 
up. When you want to smell a pineapple, smell it in this area. You want it to smell sweet because that means it is ripe. Now when there's no smell, that means it is not ripe at all. So when it smells sour or fermented, that means it is over ripe. Maybe some people like it when it's like that. I don't know, not for me. I like it just nice. A little bit of sourness, a little bit of sweetness is just perfect. So now I'm going to teach you how to ripen your pineapples the correct way. Fun fact you may or may not know, pineapples actually contain their sugar at the base. So when you hold it upside down, the sugar will go throughout the pineapple evenly. When you want to ripen your pineapple, the best thing to do is to grab a jar or some kind of a container that you can place the pineapple upside down. Leave your pineapple like this for one or two days and that way all the sugars from the base of the pineapple will spread throughout the pineapple nice and evenly as it ripens. We've come to the end of yet another episode. Now go check out our merch at iDesign at tandemmerch.com. Hopefully you'll find something you like. Also, you can follow me on Instagram at rjt99. And if you like this video, subscribe and hit that bell so you can get notified every time a video comes out. Or you can just simply download the free Click Network app to watch the videos before they hit YouTube. Thanks for watching, guys. Mwah.